I'm back. Sorry about that, guys. I had to plug my computer in and charge it and make a little breakfast and, you know, all the stuff a mom has to do. Um, but this is the last section of my 2018 creative goals um, that I really, really hope to make this year. And this is the personal goal section. And I saved this for last because um, I think that it's always important that as an artist and as a businesswoman or as a business person, that we all remember that at the end of the day, we do have to come back to self and we do have to come back to all the other things that comprise us that are not necessarily associated with our art or with our money or with our business. Um, and just making sure that we have our own physical needs, emotional needs, mental needs, intellectual needs, making sure all of those needs are actually met and that um, we're taking stock and inventory of where we are falling down on the job and taking care of ourselves and just rectifying that accordingly. So at the end of 2017, I realized that I was killing it in certain areas um, personally with regards to like my personal life and I was falling down on the job in other areas. So this year is going to be about me basically trying to expand upon and fill in the gaps that I had in my personal self-care from 2017. So let's just jump right into it and then I'm just going to end this because I'm excited to get on top of my goals and on top of my daily, you know, moving and shaking for 2018. Okay, so I divided my personal goals into seven different categories, physical health, emotional health, financial health, spiritual health, self-love care, and like self-health, family slash motherhood and hobbies. So um, basically, I actually did a great job last year, in my opinion, and just maintaining some kind of daily level of exercise, no matter how light, because um, I walk ev pretty much everywhere and I at least get in, you know, two to four miles a day walking around. Um, very basic, you know, this is nothing like that's going to get me to the next bodybuilding competition, but just is something that helps me to maintain my health, my um, heart rate, you know, maintain a healthy level of weight, etc. And I also started with just getting some more sleep, although I have to work on that and like doing vitamins and stuff. This 2018 is going to be about going from like the health 101, you know, basic level to the health 201 next level. I don't want to just like be healthy, um, which is good to be healthy because I got a really great bill of health last year, thankfully. Um, but I want to be in the process of training myself to have some actual physical prowess. So, um, you know, doing some uh, moving from casual physical maintenance to like a targeted endurance training and muscle toning, actually finishing um, an enrollment in a martial arts class. Most likely at this point, it will either be Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or Kung Fu. So I'm excited about that. We have both in town and that's really exciting. Um, and also just sleeping way more, um, trying to get anywhere between like eight and nine hours a night plus naps during the day. So I really started to take my health a lot more seriously last year, but I want to really kick that up another level. And that includes um, just paying more attention to my diet as well. Although I have a pretty good diet, I don't eat lots of red meat, not too much junk food, um, only on occasion. The thing that kind of kills me is eating out um and even when i eat out it's like a salad or a soup from panera or something so it's still healthy but um i want to focus more on uh just making more time to cook at home which i do when i have my time off and my weekends to myself when i have vacations and stuff like that so for about like i would say 33 percent of the year if not 40 percent of the year i'm able to like get meals at home cooked or whatever especially when i have my daughter but when it comes down to like the end of each semester that's like literally pizza every week you know because i'm just so swamped and so i'm really trying my best to get that number up where most of my meals are home cooked um but even so i still try my best to if i have to eat out 
due to time constraints, I try to focus on something that's healthy, not something, not fast food or anything like that. So I usually do like sandwiches or salad or soup. Um, so physical health is definitely going to be turned up a notch this year. And I'm excited to, you know, experience those changes and like show you guys those changes as they come. For my emotional health, the most important thing for me this year is to pay attention to my thoughts and engage in active, positive self-talk. Um, not that I think negatively about myself, but it has been quite a journey since 2014 up until the end of last year, basically uh, figuring out who I am emotionally and spiritually because my identity completely changed when I became a mother, um, my body comp composition changed. Um, and also, unfortunately, I was involved in a very, very toxic, abusive um, romantic relationship. This is like really the first time I've really ever talked about it on this podcast. Um, so from 2014 all the way up until like almost the middle of 2016 um, was just a like continued pattern of like just being in a toxic zone. Actually, even before then, I would say like the middle of 2013 to the middle of 2016. So it was like three years of just a complete turnaround in who I was as a person and how I felt about myself um, within the relationship and also becoming a mother inside of that relationship. And since then, things have gotten so much better. And after I left that relationship and I became more in depth with the relationship with myself, which has been an amazing, wonderful experience because in 2013 and prior to that, I was killing it. Like I thought I was like the hottest thing on the block in all aspects of life. And I did not feel that way for three years between mid-2013 to mid-2016. But as of mid-2016 and now and beyond, you know, I'm definitely back on my game in terms of how I feel inside about myself emotionally, mentally. Um, and there's still things that I have to work on, things that I have to build up, but I'm in such a much better place. And I just want to take it to the next level in 2018 by doing active things to actively rebuild all those parts inside that I think are, are standing strong, but may not be as strong as I believe they are. And so I want to go out of my way to engage in more active, positive self-talk, paying attention to my thoughts, figuring out when I feel the best about myself and the worst about myself, and deciding on creating conditions in my life where I can feel great all the time. Um, that also includes getting more sleep because the, the sleep is the great reset button. It really is. And it helps to build everything up, including your emotional and mental health. Um, so that's a major, major goal for 2018. Keeping my blessings jar full is important to me. And also keeping graduate school the hell away from my spirit and my art, because that can be very debilitating towards your self-esteem. Um, graduate school as like a crucible sometimes can be very debilitating to who you think you are, your level of intelligence, and just everything um, that you do as a person graduate school tends to challenge that a lot and I need to learn or rather I learned this last year but I need to keep reminding myself to keep those two parts of myself separate my graduate school professional development keeping that away from how I view myself as a person because graduate school is not here to dictate to me who I am I'm here to dictate to graduate school who I want to be and who I am um I also had a gangbusters year with financial health last year in terms of taking my financial awareness from zero to like a thousand percent in 2017. I learned about the five pillars of economic stability um, and freedom. And those five pillars are investments, real estate, credit, entrepreneurship, and asset protection. And I'm going to continue to build on that knowledge, continue to build up all five of those pillars in my life, both as an individual woman, as a mother, and as especially as an artist and entrepreneur. That's super important. I want to do that for my own financial health and to build wealth so that um, my daughter won't have to worry about anything in the future. She has like a nice nest egg to fall back on. But so that also for me, by the time I hit my early 40s, I'm like, kind of chilling, you know what I'm saying? Like not worrying about mortgages, not worrying about debt, not worrying about any of those things. I just kind of want to like really just be chilling, <laughs> like still working on the things that I love to do, but like 
working from a very solid place of comfort and a solid place of, okay, I have all these five pillars set, so my life is set, my family is set, and my business is set. So 2018 is going to just continue that journey. Um, I have a lot of really wonderful courses and classes I'm enrolled in to teach me more about real estate, more about credit, more about financial management, more about stocks and investments, more about cryptocurrency. And I'm always, always, always on top of building up my entrepreneurial expertise, not just in the creative content production aspect, but in the legal accounting and asset protection aspects. So I'm looking forward to a great year, just learning more about that. I also want to stand as an example to other, not only authors, but other artists, Um, with regard to how to build wealth as an artist, how to build a comfortable nest egg and a solid foundation financially as an artist. I want to stand as that example. And when I finally have my game on point, I want to teach other artists how to manage their finances and build their wealth as well. Because I do not believe in the starving artist mentality or in the starving artist role. And I'm just not going to accept that or deal with that. And you guys shouldn't either. Um, Finally, with regard to financial health, I put out into the world and basically made a covenant with myself that I'm going to work towards four major financial and business goals that I want to hit in between 2020 and 2025 and I'm not going to share them instead I actually sent I set up a, f- a letter to my future self um, basically w- which will come into my email on the date and the year of uh of of when I've set that goal for myself. So I think my first letter to myself was coming on like June, on my birthday um, in June uh, in 2020. So I'm not going to reveal those on the podcast or really ever, but those are like four major goals that I'm really, I really want to work towards in terms of like my financial success and also just like my life and business success. So I'm working towards that this year and beyond. As for spiritual health, um, I really want to get into a daily spiritual practice, which will probably involve some sort of meditation and prayer. You guys will know that or should know that I'm not um, like deeply religious. I don't prescribe to organized religion at all, but I am spiritual um, in the sense that I do believe there is a higher power, a higher energy, a higher plane that connects us. Um, I do believe that there is something that is just bigger than human beings that we can't really necessarily understand, but it's still out there. Um, And I'm not here to proselytize to you guys, but I do want to get into a, a daily and weekly spiritual practice where I do sit and connect with the higher energy, whatever it is. Um, So I'm trying to figure out what that is. And then once I figure out what that daily practice is going to be, even if it's just me taking stock on a day-to-day basis and writing, um, you know, a 10-minute, very deep focused gratitude journal and a deep focus how do I feel in my spirit right now even if it's just something like that I want to do on a day-to-day basis because I feel like that part of myself has been neglected um, and I just need to sort of connect more with my higher mind and my higher spirit and that's important to me as a person so what you decide in 2018 as to how you connect to things spiritually is completely up to you and if you don't believe in spirit spirituality that's also up to you I'm just telling you how I'm rolling. Um, Self-love care, hello, is super important. Um, Just this year, again, I rediscovered the joy of like clothes shopping and thigh-high boots. And investing more in like my skincare with like shea butter and and bubble baths and, you know, Sephora makeup, which is great. Um, Just taking care of self, just like taking pride in self. Um, A lot of mothers, and I speak for myself absolutely, but I speak for the rest of us too. Once we become mothers, upkeep often falls to the wayside. Not because we're lazy, but because we're tired and we're so used to our lives basically um, orbiting around 
the lives of our children or the lives of our husbands or our wives if we're lesbian um, or our partners or our families that we for, we forget about self we forget that we are women and we you know have these wonderful you know physical bodies that will be with us for the rest of our lives we forget to celebrate our womanliness and our physicalities and just everything that makes us a woman not just physically but just mentally emotionally and intellectually and I'm just trying to take a step back and to just celebrate myself a little bit as a woman that's really important to me that's a part of like my physical practice and I want to make that a part of like even like a spiritual practice um, just to reconnect with the feminine side um Okay, she, my daughter just called me, so hold on one second. 